What's up guys, welcome to uh, an introspective episode. <laughs> so it's the end of the year and you know, I'm just thinking about a lot of things, all, all the things that have happened this year, thinking about all the things that I have planned and don't have planned for and hope happen next year, all the things. Some things have come to my attention because uh, as you probably know, I got a lot going on upstairs, usually all the time. <laughs> things that I think about, things that are brought to my attention, things that people have mentioned, commented, uh, and then me just running with that kind of stuff. So I want to talk about some of that. But firstly, definitely want to wish everybody a Happy New Year. I hope your 2023 was awesome. And if not, I hope your 2024 will be better. Looking back on it, I think my 2023 wasn't what I expected somewhat, uh, but it was actually really good. I a lot of good things happened to me personally and in my life and in my family life. And I kind of, I think we kind of tend to forget the good things over the bad things or just over being exhausted, permanently exhausted pigeons from life. And that's definitely the case with me. Um, it, it took a minute to really sit down and think like, was 2023 good or bad or like what happened? And it's like, oh man, the more I thought about it, the more awesome things I realized have happened for me, with me, to me. Uh, that kind of thing around me. And that makes me really appreciate everything that much more. Um, the biggest thing was, you know, health. Uh, I got to travel a fair amount, never as much as I wanted, of course, but, but I did get to travel a lot. Scotland was amazing. Looking forward to Scotland again. Uh, there are three spots left on my Scotland workshop for 2024 in June. So if you're interested in that, uh, real quick plug let me know quick. Uh, but Scotland was amazing. Um, that's kind of the only big traveling that I did. I think the rest of it was pretty local to New Mexico and a little bit of Arizona. Um, but I have no complaints about that because as you well know, or as you should know, New Mexico is by far the best state. <laughs> but anyways, I had, I had a really great time just being, being local, enjoying my awesome area in the Southwest. I got a lot of great images. Uh, I had a lot of great trips. Some other cool things that came up, uh, you know, I got the rooftop tent, which was really exciting. I've been using it a lot. I've, I'm even still using it during the winter stuff and I've got more winter things planned with that coming up. So that'll be fun. That's been a great boon to how I travel and mine and camera ladies comfort when we travel. Losing weight was definitely the biggest one. Um, I, I've talked about it a little bit before and I don't normally talk too much. Well, I mean, I guess I kind of do. I don't know. I, <laughs> I talk quite a bit about my personal life. It seems like maybe more so than other people. I, I don't have like social barriers. And I think the military ruined that. <laughs> you, just, you just don't get social, you just don't get barriers in the military, you know? Uh, but I've always been like that. I've always been like a very open book. If you ask me something, I'll tell you. And if you want to know something about me, I'll tell you. And if you don't want to know something about me or you ask me something or you don't ask me something, I'll probably still tell you. <laughs> so I know some of that does leak into the videos, uh, but I, I talk about that stuff a lot more with the channel members and on the channel side of it. And this isn't like a straight up plug. It kind of is. But I'll just say that like the reason that I do that is not to put anything behind a paywall or anything like that. But it's just because like the channel members, if you're interested enough in me, to invest in a channel membership, it's like a couple bucks a month, then, you know, I feel a lot more comfortable sharing like more of my like behind the scenes life uh, with the channel members. So I do that a lot more often with the channel members and, and you know, you guys who are channel members, you obviously know that. <laughs> and the reason mostly too, aside from, aside from that, is that like, the general public, the general audience of my videos, I think just probably just doesn't really care. They don't want to see these kind of like talky, boring, you know, like what's upstairs in Brent's head video. <laughs> and I get that. That's totally cool. You want to see photography. And normally if you're, if, if this is strangely your first time here, normally my stuff is outside. It, it is a lot of photography, wildlife, landscape, astro, phone stuff, travel, you know, the works. Uh, but I just felt like, you know, the end of the year, I'd sit down and just kind of unpack some of my upstairsness with you guys. On that note, thinking about like how good 2023 was, 
and thinking about like also the changes that happened in 2023 and then like what I what I'm looking forward to, what I'm hoping for, what I'm dreading, all of the things for 2024. Let's uh, let's dive into some of that and address a couple of the, the biggest things I think that have come up lately. So I'm not going to talk too much about it because I've already made a very, very long video about it. Uh, one of the biggest changes for me personally in, in photography for my business is I, I got that giant uh, 500 millimeter F4, the Mark II version back there. And that... Uh, Expensive is a relative term, and for me, it was relatively expensive. <laughs> so maybe for some people out there who are more fortunate, it's not as big of a purchase, but it was for me. And I made a whole video on how I got it, why I got it, all of the sacrifices that I made personally, uh, and the choices that I thought about in order to get that, the hows and the whys and everything. So you can check that out if you, if you want to know more about what's up here for my decision-making processes. Uh, so that was a big one. Um, but, and then, you know, so I go around, that was a couple months ago, a few months ago, I think back in September or something. And then I go around for a few months and I'm using it and I'm making videos and people are loving the content and everything's going well. And then I put out a video last week. Uh, and that video was very, very contradictory to what I have been showcasing and kind of like indirectly, I don't know, pushing the narrative of like, you know, the big prime is better and it's worth it and all of these things. And then I put out a video last week where I said that something completely contradictory that uh, I'm going to lighten my load and I want small, smaller bodies, smaller lenses, smaller backpacks, you know, I want like as, as the least amount of gear as possible to, to keep me light and nimble and happy. So along with both of these decisions, let me just throw in there real quick. Cause I did mention health, um, along with that, like I, I've struggled a lot with health over the last, um, how long have I been out of the Navy? Almost 20 years. <laughs> so I got out in 2006 uh, and I, I was medically discharged. Uh, I broke a lot of things. Um, just in my youth, I broke a lot of things. In the military, I broke things. You know, I, I snapped this arm in half. Um, it took days to fix and it never healed. And many, many surgeries later, so my shoulders are destroyed, my back is destroyed, fractured, uh, knees tendons, ankles, my body has been abused. Um, some of it's been my fault through skateboarding and martial arts, and some of it's been the military accidents at work. And I've always struggled with mobility, like most of my adult life. And I didn't realize that I kind of, I kind of took it for, it was like the physical stuff, like couldn't be fixed. Um, but I do a lot of yoga, I do a lot of meditation, and, and um, I always thought that I couldn't like traditionally work out. But I never realized how bad my eating habits were. I always thought I was a pretty good eater. I don't drink alcohol, I've never drank in my life. I don't smoke. Um, I don't eat a lot of red meat, like maybe like one hamburger a month, if that. Uh, you know, so those things, I don't drink sodas. Um, things like that I always thought like oh I'm, I'm doing pretty good but I didn't realize like how much sugar and bread that I consume and I also didn't realize how much that affected me my my inflammation I didn't realize how inflamed my entire body was and that it was like directly correlated to the amount of sugar and bread that I was intaking and I am not a nutritionist um, I care a lot about it I am a scientist but, you know, don't, don't listen to me for, I'm not giving advice here. I'm just telling you what happened to me and what works, worked for me, with me, whatever. But when I, needless to say, a few months ago, when I cut out bread and sugar, I lost 10 pounds like in a week. And then in three months, I lost 25 pounds. And I didn't realize how, it doesn't sound like a lot, but I just realized that like, I took two bowling balls out of me, basically worth of weight. Like, that's insane. You know, like the bags that I carry and the gear that I wear, like that's a lot of times, that's like 25 pounds. 
I just took like that bag out of me somehow. Like I'm not a, I'm not, I didn't consider myself like a big obese guy or anything. I'm six foot one and I was always around like 210. And now I'm six foot one and I'm a 185. And cutting that stuff out, my, my joints stopped hurting. I have had to wear knee braces since I was 16 years old. And definitely I had to wear them a lot more after injuries in the military and stuff like that. And just anything, like if I want to go to the store, if, if I'm going to be vertical, I've had to wear knee braces. I'll, and, you know, if you look back in the older videos and stuff, anytime I'm wearing shorts, you guys will see me in a knee brace. I haven't had my, to wear my knee braces almost at all this year. And that's a very liberating feeling. I used to rock climb, I used to skateboard and kayak and mountain bike and do all those things. And uh, I haven't been able to do them. And now I can, because now I feel like amazing. I feel better right now than I, than I ever have in my entire adult life. It gives me a huge motivation uh, moving forward with what I wanna do, what I think I'm capable of doing and all of that. So I know that was a bit of a tangent, but it, it's a big deal to me. And I haven't talked about it too much. I've mentioned it a few times, but um, that that's a big part of like what's going on upstairs with me and where I want to go with my channel and my life. So the health aspect was huge for 2023 for me. And that opened up hopefully a lot of doors for what I'm willing and able to do and what I think that I can do. And that also ties into that last video that I did, you know, feeling this good, I want to, uh, I want to lighten my load. I'm tired of carrying big, heavy bags. And the problem is like, usually I have a 35 liter bag, I have a 50 liter bag. Those are the ones that I take the most. The bigger your bag, the more you tend to want to fill it up with things for the just in case, you know, and I, the whole video I talked about, the, the last video that I made before this, that's a really great video. I think uh, it's not very popular on the channel, but it was a great day for me and it was, I think, beautifully filmed and the area that we were at was amazing. So if, you do, if you're in the mood for just a great landscape photography video, you should go check that out. And if you like really old, like ancient Native American stuff, you should check it out too because I went to a really cool place um, here where I live. Anyways, that whole motif ties into my weight loss and me wanting to feel good and hike more and one of the things that I've always dreaded about hiking, whether I'm doing it for the channel or not, is like, I'm a photographer, I wanna take gear, and I, what if I see this? What if I see that? What if I wanna shoot this? What if I wanna shoot that? All of the what ifs, like, destroy me. And and I know that they probably mess with you too. Um, there's a good, I mean, we're all human. It, the way that our societies have developed, the way that our culture has developed, the way that we think, what if plays a lot into that and one of my goals moving forward is to stop the what ifs and really just be a little more present and to do that i want to lighten my load and that's the contradictory part to like i got a 500 millimeter it's like one of the biggest heaviest lenses you can get uh it's big it's heavy it's expensive it's cumbersome it's unwieldy uh, you don't want to hike with it all of these things. And that's like the exact opposite of what I said. So like, what's going on there? Like, why, why, would, I, why would I do that? Why would I say that? Well, th there's two different things going on that I think some people who've commented about this don't really understand or haven't seen. That 500 is a business investment. That is an investment for my business, for my photography business. That is a desire for me for one specific thing to get better at wildlife photography specifically professionally, that's going to help me do that. And it has. Um, I, I've had so many comments over the past couple of months from just using this lens and from it being videos and on my Instagram and all that stuff from people who have really noticed. It seems that a lot of people have noticed maybe um, a step up in the quality of some of my wildlife stuff, you know, and it's not something that I've pushed. It's not something that I've talked about. And people were just like, oh man, like I, I really have noticed that quality jump for you. And I, I'm not saying that a, a big lens like that will make you a better photographer. 
Uh, I'm saying that if you're a good enough photographer, it will help you because it's a tool. And without sounding too arrogant or anything, I do think that I am a good enough photographer that I know what I can get out of something like that. And it also pushes me harder, you know, not knowing that I have that, knowing how much I spent, how much I sacrificed, it makes me want to use it as much as possible. But that being said, like, it's a 500, it's a prime. I'm not going to go hike around with that. I'm not going to go scouting with that. I'm not going to go travel like everywhere with that. I'm not going to keep it in my car. That's why I got the RF 100 to 400. That lens is the perfect complement for me because it is the smallest, lightest, best quality telephoto lens that I can get in the Canon world. And that's what I want. I want something that's so small and so light that I can keep it on me and still hike with that thing and not even notice that the one to 400 is there. I want something so small and light that I can keep it in my car, ready to go. You know, I live out here in the middle of nowhere. I'm driving around in the woods, a deer or a mountain lion or a bear jumps in front of me, whatever. I want something right there that just bam. You know, if I want to go hike to a new place and check things out and scout for whatever, um, then I want the one to 400. And that's exactly what that whole last video was about. That's how I want to use it. That's what's making it become my favorite lens. And then of course I use it for landscape. You guys know I use telephotos for landscape more often than anything else. And the one to 500 before I sold it was my most used lens ever period for landscape and wildlife. So I shoot a lot of landscape from one to four or 500. So having the one to 400 again for everyday use, that's, that's what I want moving forward. And then having the little primes like the 24 one eight that I'm filming with, you know, that's how I want to roll moving forward. So it may seem contradictory to say like, I want to lighten my load. And then also to say that like, I'm just getting the biggest lens possible, but that's like out of context. And you just have to understand there's a business side and there's a lifestyle side, you know, and th that's where I'm at with my photography right now. But I want to start focusing more on my lifestyle. And the great thing about the one to 400 to me is that I know a lot of people complain about it, but I'm not those people. I'm not complaining about it. I know exactly what it is. I know exactly what it's capable of. I know exactly its weaknesses and I know exactly how good I am at editing and what I can get out of that lens. And I know that if, if an opportunity does present itself, I will be able to get portfolio level images and I will be able to work around its weaknesses or whatever, if that's what I have. And that's what it's going to take to get the shot. But you guys probably also know that I don't complain much, you know, like I'm a, I'm a pretty positive guy. So I always try to look at the positive rather than focusing on the negative. Uh, and so let's transition there and talk about the positive and negative of my channel, like the dichotomy of my channel, which seems to be splitting and it's causing me a lot of like, and it's causing me a lot of internal conflict, uh, lots of deep conversations with camera lady about what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. My channel is an enigma. It's not like other photography channels. Most, uh, most other photography people that you watch on YouTube have one or two things that they do, you know, and that's their niche. And that really helps them. And my channel and my photography life, my photography style is everywhere. It's all over the place. If it has to do with photography, I do it, you know, um, I have managed to narrow it down on my channel and just calm the channel down a little bit. And basically my channel is about four things. Now, those four things are wildlife, landscape, astrophotography, and phone photography. I still do a lot of phone photography and yes, I'm a full-time professional photographer and I still tell people on the daily, it is okay to use one of these. And I think, and I know a lot of people look down on me for that and that makes me seem less professional. And I know that other professionals have attitudes towards it because I've been the subject of those kind of criticisms. And I couldn't care less, you know, it, it's a tool for creativity. And if it gets people into uh, an art form, which is photography, then I'm all for it. I don't care what it is. And I will promote the heck out of it and 
Personally, I love having a phone in my pocket, knowing what they can do these days and knowing what I can do with it. So those are the four things about my channel that I've kind of narrowed it down to. I've quit doing a lot of the other things. I've quit doing video stuff. I've, I've kind of, I don't do as much editing stuff as I used to, tutorials. I don't do portrait stuff anymore, but outside of that, my business of photography, I still do all of that stuff. I still do a lot of commercial stuff, event stuff. I do a ton of music event stuff for our business. Um, portraits, sports, travel, you know, all of those things I still do for my business. And all of this is like my channel. It's on the one hand, it's really cool because it keeps me from getting burnt out as much because if I, you know, if I do five wildlife videos in a row, and it's like, man, I just, I'm tired. I want to do something else. I'm, well, I'm going to go grab a wide angle and I'm going to go do some landscape or some astro or whatever. So that's cool. But it also hurts me because, you know, my channel is like really fractured because that means somebody finds me for a wildlife video and then they watch a bunch of wildlife videos and then I don't post wildlife for a while and I post something else and then they get upset and then they, you know, whatever, this guy sucks. Like, I don't care about astro. Uh, you know, I don't care about phones. And then they unsubscribe, you know, or, you know, you see what I get. Like I have four like main audiences, you know, and very few people in my audience care about the, the full breadth of photography. And they, very few people in my audience care about other genres other than whatever they're interested in. And so that hurts me like as a, as a channel, like I have a hundred thousand subscribers and oh yeah, that was another thing. 2023, I hit a hundred thousand subscribers and mentally that's like an amazing boost. It made, it makes me feel like very empowering, very stoked to keep pushing forward. But you know, because my channel is so fractured, sometimes I can post a video that will get 50,000 views, a hundred thousand views, a million views. I've got videos all over the place. And sometimes I can post a video that gets 2,500 views, you know, 1,500 views. That's the really, really low end. I'd probably cry if, if it still got that low these days. But, you know, like two to 3,000 is like a low average for some of my more mediocre videos. And as a content creator who like relies on views and all of this and, and income and everything and, and views for brand deals and partnerships and all of that, it's kind of soul crushing. And it's kind of hard to deal with, like, you know, when I look at my other friends on YouTube and, and colleagues and everything, and I see people, you know, like when I see like Gavin, you know, I, I love Gavin Hardcastle. I love his videos. Gavin and like Tom, you know, Tom Heaton, and, and they are so niched, you know, that they have such a loyal audience because when you watch one of their videos, you know what you're going to get you know what genre you're going to get, you know what style you're going to get, you just, you know exactly what you're going to get and people really like that. And it's important, I think a lot of creators will tell you to be on YouTube, you need to be as niched as possible and I'm not. And I still somehow managed to grow, but now it's kind of coming back to bite me. And it's like, that's why in 2023, I, try to, I tried to kind of niche it down a little bit, but I just, I just can't do it, I'm sorry. I'm, if you're watching for one thing, I love you and I appreciate you, but I will do that one thing and then I will probably do something else. But I have tried to narrow it down to wildlife, landscape, astro, and phone stuff. Those are kind of like the four things you know you're gonna get from me now. But it still hurts my channel, you know, because I, I refuse to just stop doing three things and just pick one and just make the channel about that. I just can't, I can't do it. It's not in me. I, I may never be a, much more of a successful YouTuber than I am now, but I'm happy. And I think that's the biggest, you know, the older I get in life, the, the more important I realize that, you know, I'll be 2024, 20, I'll be turning 40 this year. And, and, you know, also personally, I've mentioned this, but you know, I don't talk about it too much, but I lost my dad in 2022 to, to cancer. And that hit me really hard um, because he was, he was young, you know, young, I feel like he had a lot more life to live and, and that scared me for moving forward. And, you know, the, and I've always had health problems, you know, as I, I've, I've alluded to with, with my own physical issues and, 
all of that stuff combined has really made me focus more on happiness. And that's what, I, like, 2024 moving forward is like, I've got to be happy everywhere. I've got to be happy physically. I've got to be happy upstairs. And I've got to try to get the most, enjoy the most out of my life. And, you know, I, I've posted a few times on Instagram too about like working too hard and how I feel like I'm constantly feeling guilty. Um, I like to play video games. I don't play them that much. I don't play them that much anymore, mostly because I feel really guilty. And I've been feeling guilty, like owning your own business. You know, I have a teenage son. Uh, well, camera lady, camera lady and I have a teenage son and, and we homeschool him and just raising a kid and taking care of a family. And it's like, this is my own, photography is my only job. So I'm just constantly like, I, I, I guess I make myself feel guilty for anytime I take a break, like, oh, you should be working. You should be writing a newsletter. You should be researching things. You should be uh, working on the next video. You should be editing photos. You should be, you know, whatever. There's a million things that I could be doing. And I, I really push that guilt on myself. So another thing moving forward is like, I just want to like set some time and just take a break and play a video game for an hour or two, you know, and, and not try not to feel super guilty about it. Uh, and it's, it's going okay right now. Camera lady got me a couple of video games for Christmas and I've been forcing myself to play them because one, they were expensive. <laughs> and two, I really have been looking forward to playing them, but happiness has been huge. And that also ties in with the channel being split, you know, like it's hard, and if I would niche it down, I would do better, I think, probably. But my happiness might decline, and I just, I love you guys, but I'm not willing to sacrifice my complete happiness for the YouTube algorithm, you know? So for the few, very few of you out there who enjoy everything that I do, no matter what type of photography it is, I really love you guys, and I wish there was about a million more of you. <laughs> But for everybody else, like, I, I just, I don't know. I, I can't force myself to do one thing on YouTube. It's just not going to happen. But I am moving forward, going to try, like I said, I've already niched it down into four categories. I'm going to try to stick with those. And I'm going to try to be balanced about it, you know. I, I like, I do one video a week. Usually, the December has been horrible. Uh, I think I only put out two videos in December, which is why my my money has plummeted for December and usually December is a really good month. So I really messed that up, <laughs> but doing one video a week, uh, I still can maintain a decent amount of balance between the types of videos that I do and, uh, living where I live. I'm lucky that I can get out year round and I, I don't really have any weather and like climate, uh, or region, whatever environmental issues that would stop me usually from doing any of the type of videos that I want to do. So I'm very lucky and I'm very glad that I live here in New Mexico and I absolutely love it. So moving forward, like, you know, I said I was super stoked about hitting 100,000 and I am. And, but I'm also at the same time, like, I've also been like really worried about like where the channel's going to go. Is it going to be able to grow or am I just going to stagnate, you know, because it's really disheartening when you've reached these milestones and you have videos that have six and even seven figures for views. And then, it, and then it's just, ah, oh, just, it's soul crushing when you see that 10 out of 10 on the YouTube analytics and you see, <laughs> and then you see YouTube telling you in the analytics, uh, in the behind the scenes, what I see in analytics, it says, Oh, the, your, your audience is choosing not to watch this video. So we're not recommending it. And it's doing poorly because then you're just like, Oh, that's soul crushing. <laughs> so I just, it, it also makes me feel like, you know, I know Nick talked to uh, Nick Page. If you don't know who he is, you should definitely, and you like landscape stuff. He's one of the best in the world. Uh, Nick talks about this a lot, you know, how, and, and I, I parallel this a lot. The pressure to create and the pressure to play the game for doing the algorithm and, and, doing the catchy titles and I don't want to say clickbaity. I really try as hard as I can not to do clickbaity titles, but camera lady has been pushing me really hard to not do clickbait, but to do catchy titles, you know, titles that, that live up to it, 
but they're catchy. And to play that game with the titles and the thumbnails and the, the videos and thinking about what can I do for this video that will do well, that is exhausting and it, it is the biggest killer of creativity and I wish that I could just post whatever I want and that, you know, people would enjoy it, but it just doesn't work that way. And that's where, you know, people like Nick, I know he struggles with that. And I, the sucky thing is like, I know more people than not love his stuff. And that's what I was saying earlier too, about as humans, we, we kind of tend to, feel we can have a million good things happen and one bad negative thing. And we're going to focus on that negative thing. And that's just, that's psychologically, that's how our brains work, you know, and it takes a lot of conscious effort to step over that and to, to continue to focus on the good rather than the bad. And for us content creators, especially being in the spotlight, putting ourselves out there constantly, it's very hard to do that. And so looking forward, like I have to figure out how I'm going to play this game without like being morally unscrupulous <laughs> or what I would deem morally unscrupulous. You know, I, I really hate clickbaity titles and I really hate doing themed videos, you know, doing the top five and the, oh my God, do you guys want me to do a video on how to get sharper photos? Like that's, that seems to be all I see is like those videos shoot through the roof and people do like, this is why your photos aren't sharp and how to, how to get better, sharper, you know, and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. People need to know this information and, and the people who are doing these videos are doing them well and I respect them and all that stuff, but I'm not willing to play that game and it, my channel is suffering for it. The other thing that I'm not willing to do, and I've done it just very rarely on the channel and I know that this would help me but I'm just not willing to do it is be authoritative. You know, um, I am a professional photographer. I do know what I'm doing. I do have 20 years plus of experience with cameras. I think that does give me license in most people's eyes to be a credible instructor or YouTuber or whatever you want to call, you know, entertainer, every, anything. And if I were to make videos that were more authoritative, uh, they would probably do better and people would click on them because then the authoritativeness is directed to you and not me. And what I mean by that is like, my last video is a perfect example. Um, what was it called? So I called it Photography is Weighing Me Down. And then on the thumbnail, I put uh, time to change the way I do this. Notice the word I. That's the big point here is it what I could have said is that might have been more and it still would have been relevant and wouldn't have been clickbait, but might have been more catchy and more authoritative is I could have said something along the lines of do this to be a better photographer or this is what you need to do and capitalize you instead of I. But I took that authoritativeness away and I put it on me to be uh, a subjective personal title. This is what I need to do to get better. I'm not telling what you what to do. And the people that do use the more authoritative videos, uh, they're more successful on YouTube. Clearly you can, you know who they are. You can go see them, you know, you know, you can see like they're authoritative figures and they're, they're clearly comfortable with, with being authoritative. And I've been a teacher, I've been an instructor, you know, I've taught science, I've taught art, I've taught lots of things. So I'm comfortable teaching, but I'm still not comfortable being an authoritative figure and doing those authoritatively titled videos. Uh, it's just not something that I've, I've been willing to do. And that's hurting my channel too. I know that if I were to do that, um, then maybe my videos might be viewed more. I don't know. So there's a lot to think about with like how I want to move forward and the direction that camera lady and I want to take the channel. But what I do know is that I want to travel more, even if it's locally, I just, I love getting out more. We, the new tools, the camera lady and I have gotten all, over the past couple months, I think are really going to help us to film a different way and to film better than we have before. And I'm really looking forward to that, regardless of what style video I do. I'm really looking forward to them just being better in my eyes.
All right, well, I think I've rambled way, way long enough. Uh, it's second breakfast time, it's tea time. And maybe because it's the end of the year after I get this video done, maybe it's relaxing time for, for a little quick video game session. Baldur's Gate 3 on the PS5 is so much fun. Oh my God. <laughs> That's all I'll say. I don't play first person shooters or anything like that. Uh, I definitely don't play war games. I, I lived it, I had enough of that. <laughs> I only play fantasy stuff, but uh, I'm looking forward to traveling, better videos, more videos, relaxing, wildlife, landscape, astro and phone stuff, and lots of tea. So let me know what you think, uh, questions, comments, interests, whatever. You know I love talking to you guys in the comments, so hit me up down there and uh, I will see you in the next year. I've got some cool stuff coming up for the next couple of weeks. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna be able to get out for some winter camping, uh, for some wildlife and landscape stuff. Camera Lady's got conditions. We're gonna see if we can meet those and see, uh, <laughs> see if we have some workarounds to keep her comfortable and happy for some winter camping. So if you haven't already, uh, definitely hit that subscribe button. Check out the channel memberships. Like I said, if you wanna see more behind the scenes content and hear more random stuff from my head and see, I've also got a lot of editing tutorials and stuff like that from the behind the scenes that I do for channel members. So the channel memberships is just huge. It helps me so much. It keeps me afloat. I would be struggling a lot more right now if it weren't for the channel members. So I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Happy new year. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.